Dark Psychology Secrets The Essential Guide to Persuasion Emotional Manipulation Deception Mind Control Human Behavior NLP and Hypnosis How to Stop Being Manipulated and Defend Your Mind Daniel James Hollins Chapter 6 Persuasion What is persuasion? When you think about persuasion, what comes to mind? Some people might think of advertising messages that urge viewers to buy a particular product, while others might think of a political candidate trying to sway voters to choose his or her name on the ballot box. Persuasion is a powerful force in daily life and has a major influence on society and a whole. Politics, legal decisions, mass media, news, and advertising are all influenced by the power of persuasion and influence us in turn. Sometimes we like to believe that we are immune to persuasion. That we have a natural ability to see through the sales, comprehend the truth in a situation, and come to conclusions all on our own. This might be true in some scenarios, but persuasion isn't just a pushy salesman trying to sell you a car, or a television commercial enticing you to buy the latest and greatest product. Persuasion can be subtle, and how we respond to such influences can depend on a variety of factors. When we think of persuasion, negative examples are often the first to come to mind, but persuasion can also be used as a positive force. Public service campaigns that urge people to recycle or quit smoking are great examples of persuasion used to improve people's lives. So what exactly is persuasion? According to Perloff, 2003, persuasion can be defined as a symbolic process in which communicators try to convince other people to change their attitudes or behaviors regarding an issue through the transmission of a message in an atmosphere of free choice. The key elements of this definition of persuasion are that Persuasion is symbolic, utilizing words, images, sounds, etc. It involves a deliberate attempt to influence others. Self-persuasion is key. People are not coerced. They are instead free to choose. Methods of transmitting persuasive messages can occur in a variety of ways including verbally and non-verbally via television, radio, internet, or face-to-face -face communication. How does persuasion differ today? While the art and science of persuasion have been of interest since the time of the ancient Greeks, there are significant differences between how persuasion occurs today and how it has occurred in the past. In his book, The Dynamics of Persuasion, Communication and Attitudes in the 21st Century, Richard M. Perloff outlines the five major ways in which modern persuasion differs from the past. The number of persuasive messages has grown tremendously. Think for a moment about how many advertisements you encounter on a daily basis. According to various sources, the number of advertisements the average U.S. adult is exposed to each day ranges from around 300 to over 3,000. Persuasive communication travels far more rapidly. Television, radio, and the internet all help spread persuasive messages very quickly. Persuasion is big business. In addition to the companies that are in business purely for persuasive purposes, such as advertising agencies, marketing firms, public relations companies, and many other businesses, are reliant on persuasion to sell goods and services. Contemporary persuasion is much more subtle. Of course, there are plenty of ads that use very obvious persuasive strategies, but many messages are far more subtle. For example, businesses sometimes carefully craft very specific image designed to urge viewers to buy products or services in order to attain that projected lifestyle. Persuasion is more complex. Consumers are more diverse and have more choices so marketers have to be savvier when it comes to selecting their persuasive medium and message. Modern Persuasion Pratt Connies and Aronson, 1991, argue convincingly that Western societies prefer persuasion even more than other societies do. Marriages aren't arranged, they are left up to the persuasive tactics of each couple. 
Unlike communistic countries that control trade, the creation of consumer tastes and choices is left to the advertiser. Arguments aren't settled by clan leaders or religious authorities, but of the wrangling of attorneys. Rulers are not royally born or chosen because of their ability, but arise through one of the largest persuasion rituals of all, the election campaign. The candidate that has both good looks and a persuasive demeanor almost always wins. The ancient Greeks had a more grounded approach to persuasion. A Greek citizen could hire a sophist to help him learn to argue. Sophists were itinerant lecturers and writers devoted to knowledge, you might say they were the graduate students of the ancient world. The sophists argued that persuasion was a useful tool to discover truth. They thought the process of arguing and debating would expose bad ideas and allow the good ones to be revealed. A sophist didn't particularly care which side of an issue he was arguing. In fact, sophists would sometimes switch sides in the middle of a debate. Their stated goal was reasoned argument that exposed the truth. They believed in the free market of good ideas. Does that sound like our world? No, we rely on the use of persuasive and compliance tactics much more than did the ancients. But does the modern approach to persuasion take the form of reasoned argument and debate? Hardly. Today's persuaders appeal to the masses through the manipulation of symbols and of our most basic human emotions to achieve their goals. Since the ability to persuade and to resist persuasion is directly related to one's success in life, you'd think the topic would be taught in school. You'd think people would know their persuasion tactics as well as they know the letters of the alphabet or the Ten Commandments or how to perform CPR. But how many of us can recite ten principles of persuasion? How many of us can evaluate a situation and choose the right persuasive tool for the job at hand? How many of us are even aware of the thousands of times each day we are influenced by someone else? Do this. Take a look in your medicine cabinet, or your pantry, or your garage. Each item you see is a war trophy, representing some company's victory over their competitors. For some reason, or maybe for no reason at all, they convinced you to trade your hard-earned money for their product. How did they do that, exactly? Make no mistake. There are legions of influence agents operating in our society. They thrive, they exist at the pinnacles of power, by getting you to think things, and to do things they want you to think and do. Most people are either unaware of these influences, or when they are, vastly overestimate the amount of freedom they have to make up their own minds. But the successful influence agent knows that if he can manage the situation and choose the correct technique, your response to his technique will be as reliable as the springing of a mousetrap. Methods of Persuasion The ultimate goal of persuasion is to convince the target to internalize the persuasive argument and adopt this new attitude as a part of their core belief system. The following are just a few of the highly effective persuasion methods. Other methods include the use of rewards, punishments, positive or negative expertise, and many others. Create a need. One method of persuasion involves creating a need, or an appealing a previously existing need. This type of persuasion appeals to a person's fundamental needs for shelter, love, self-esteem, and self-actualization. Marketers often use this strategy to sell their products. Consider. For example, how many advertisements suggest that people need to purchase a particular product in order to be happy, safe, loved, or admired? Appeal to social needs Another very effective persuasive method appeals to the need to be popular, prestigious, or similar to others. Television commercials provide many examples of this type of persuasion, where viewers are encouraged to purchase items so they can be like everyone else or be like a well-known or well-respected person. Television advertisements are a huge source of exposure to persuasion, considering that some estimates claim that the average American watches between 1,500 to 2,000 hours of television every year. Use loaded words and images. Persuasion also often makes use of loaded words and images. 
Advertisers are well aware of the power of positive words, which is why so many advertisers utilize phrases such as new and improved, or all natural. Get your foot in the door. Another approach that is often effective in getting people to comply with a request, is known as the foot in the door technique. This persuasion strategy involves getting a person to agree to a small request, like asking them to purchase a small item, followed by making a much larger request. By getting the person to agree to the small initial favor, the requester already has their foot in the door, making the individual more likely to comply with a larger request. For example, a neighbor asks you to babysit her two children for an hour or two. Once you agree to the smaller request, she then asks if you can just babysit the kids for the rest of the day. Since you have already agreed to the smaller request, you might feel a sense of obligation to also agree to the larger request. This is a great example of what psychologists refer to as the rule of commitment, and marketers often use this strategy to encourage consumers to buy products and services. Go big and then small. This approach is the opposite of the foot in the door approach. A salesperson will begin by making a large, often unrealistic request. The individual responds by refusing, figuratively slamming the door on the sale. The salesperson responds by making a much smaller request, which often comes off as conciliatory. People often feel obligated to respond to these offers. Since they refuse that initial request, People often feel compelled to help the salesperson by accepting the smaller request. Utilize the power of reciprocity. When people do you a favor, you probably feel an almost overwhelming obligation to return the favor in kind. This is known as the norm of reciprocity, a social obligation to do something for someone else because they first did something for you. Marketers might utilize this tendency by making it seem like they are doing you a kindness such as including extras or discounts, which then compels people to accept the offer and make a purchase. Create an anchor point for your negotiations. The anchoring bias is a subtle cognitive bias that can have a powerful influence on negotiations and decisions. When trying to arrive at a decision, the first offer has the tendency to become an anchoring point for all future negotiations. So if you are trying to negotiate a pay increase, Being the first person to suggest a number, especially if that number is a bit high, can help influence the future negotiations in your favor. That first number will become the starting point. While you might not get that amount, starting high might lead to a higher offer from your employer. Limit your availability. Psychologist Robert Cialdini is famous for the six principles of influence that he first outlined in his best selling 1984 book. Influence, the psychology of persuasion. One of the key principles he identified is known as scarcity or limiting the availability of something. Cialdini suggests that things become more attractive when they are scarce or limited. People are more likely to buy something if they learn that it is the last one or that the sale will be ending soon. An artist, for example, might only make a limited run of a particular print. Since there are only a few prints available for sale, people might be more likely to make a purchase before they are gone. Spend time noticing persuasive messages. The examples above are just a few of the many persuasion techniques described by social psychologists. Look for examples of persuasion in your daily experience. An interesting experiment is to view a half hour of a random television program and note every instance of persuasive advertising. You might be surprised by the sheer amount of persuasive techniques used in such a brief period of time.